September the year 2020. Of course, we are broadcasting to you live from Zambia, capital city Lusaka. And of course, remember, the program is also live on Top Star Decoder channel 104. And indeed, uh, our social media page is active. We can able to send all those questions and uh, comments that you have. Once we've got time, we'll be able to forward those to our guests on the program. Now today we tune our gear to something very special because we believe that the women folk, these are special products in our society. And we thought of engaging them. And one of the people that we thought of bringing to your screen is a very charismatic person, very courageous amongst the women we have in Zambia. She's been all of us at uh, the media as well as, of course, at the political space uh, trying to prove herself that indeed women, they can able to penetrate or to achieve that which we, we, you, the men out there, including I myself, sometimes can't do. Her name is uh, Judith Kalemba, who happens to be Democratic Party Vice President. She sits here to represent the party. And of course, we find out what really transpired for them not to find themselves in the State House today as they had promised us prior to the general elections. That's my guest on the program. Uh, Vip, welcome to the assignment. Thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, good to see you. Thank After you a long very time. After a long time. Indeed. It was a journey. <laughs> I believe so. But we are here. Thank you so much. The Lord is gracious. Indeed. Uh, allow me to, first of all, congratulate you for your appointment. I think I've never done this officially on camera as a vice president. You've come a long way. I believe that uh, according to what we've heard so far from the people of Zambia, you deserve that position. Thank you very much. Um, and also, I've always said thank you to President Kalaba. I've also said mm -hmm. thank you to our National Democratic Committee, as well as the DP family, mm -hmm. for the privilege they've actually given me yeah. um, mm -hmm. to be party vice president. Mm -hmm. And also my further appreciation to President Kalawa because in the last uh, election he had given me a privilege to run as his uh, presidential running mate. Yeah. Further, I want to say thank you to the women, the women first of all out there. Uh, you will not believe the support that I have gotten from my fellow women. Mm. Um, you know, in the past, people would say women don't support each other, women do this, but we thank God that that has gone, and we are on a very different uh, page where we as women are carrying one another. Mm. And also want to say thank you to the men out there, because, I mean, besides every successful woman, there is a man. And so thank you to all the men out there, those that have been encouraging me, those that have been <laughs> advising me, uh, criticizing me, because that is how we grow. I have um, my Mbuya here, and he's been very instrumental in this journey. I can only say thank you so much to the youths. Wow, it's been very amazing. All right. I just couldn't understand yeah how that really the youths have been waiting for a youthful um, vice president who they can relate to easily because sometimes <coughs> there are these generational gaps age gaps where certain things you can't discuss because of that gap but i think i have come and the gap has been bridged mm -hmm. thank you very much all right, uh, thank you so much. Indeed, uh, that's my guest on the program, uh, Judith Kawemba, coming from my uh, DP. Now, uh, Madam Kawemba, I want to believe that uh, you've been very instrumental, uh, very vocal uh, when uh, prior to the general elections, uh, uh, which we just, of course, uh, uh, came to an end uh, a month ago. You made a very strong uh, promise that uh, come August 12th, the DP under President Harry Kalaba you are going to be in state house. Sadly, you are back in the opposition. Tell us, what went wrong? Well, before I even talk about what went wrong or what didn't go wrong, yeah. first of all, I want to say thank you to the people of Zambia. Mm. Um, innocent, you need to appreciate that our party has just been in opposition for two years. Uh, the first year of our being in existence, we were deregistered. 
we spent the whole year, you remember that time we were battling in court, uh, eventually we won the case, then we only had two years to mobilize our party. And the two years that we've been mobilizing our party, we have come out third. Out of 16 presidential candidates, our president, our party, came out third. I think we deserve a part on the back because there are people that have been there and we were contesting these elections for the first time and the people of Zambia voted for us, they trusted us and gave us the third position. Thank you so much to all those that voted for us. Even those that didn't vote for us, we know that... Uh, they didn't vote for us this time around, but 2026, they are going to vote for us. Mm. Coming to the question, what went wrong? Sure. I want to believe that Zambia had reached a point where the Zambians were tired with what was going on. They could not stomach it anymore. Everybody was waiting for the 12th of August to mm. go and vote and bring in something new. Mm. And I want to believe that it is from that background that the people of Zambia looked at which vehicle was close to forming government mm. and they saw that our colleagues in the UPND had been there yeah. for 23 years. That's a long, long journey. Mm. And I must also appreciate those that stood with the UPND from the beginning because it wasn't easy. It was a long journey, 23 years. That means somebody who was, who was not born, they are born, they even finish grade 12, and they even get into university. Mm. So the people of Zambia voted for the UPND, and here we are. So the first step has been done, which was to take the PF government out of office mm. and bring in the UPND or whichever was to come in. In this case, the UPND went into State House. The second step will be to bring in DP. So it's a lose and win. You can't win both sides. Mm. Let's come to the lessons that uh, you learned along the way uh, in your quest to um, wanting to go to State House or to form government uh, in the last elections. What lessons, big lessons, did you learn from those elections? Well, let me begin by saying the elections were not easy. Right. They were not easy. We operated under very difficult uh, uh, conditions. I mean, our colleagues had made it very difficult for all of us to campaign. Uh, had it not been for the media, I mean, even the votes that we got, even the third position that we got, was going to be very difficult but because you people in the media were there and let me also say thank you to all the media houses in Zambia because amidst uh, that terrain that we were in you were able to cover us as opposition and especially us as DP and so we say thank you so much big lessons big lessons to be learned is number one no matter how powerful you are, no matter how strong you are, the voice of the people will always emerge victorious. Right. That is the biggest lesson that we, all of us that are aspiring for office mm. and those that have gone into office should learn. Because sometimes as human beings, we begin to think because you'll have the power, you have the instruments of power, and so you are thinking, you can do anything. Mm. It has taught us that Zambian people are not a people to play with. Further, for us as DP, yeah. it has also given us the impetus, the courage that we can form government in 2026. Because amidst all that intimidation, amidst all that abuse of the police, I mean, the UPND managed to win. President Againde Ichirema never had a rally on the Copper Belt. You remember how he was blocked and he was told you can go and have a rally in Lusaka. He never had uh, a rally uh, right here in Lusaka. He never had a rally in Kabwe. But the people of Zambia were watching 
and they were seeing what was happening and when they went in the ballot they spoke and they spoke the loudest mm -hmm. so that has given us courage it's a lesson to learn that the people of Zambia will always emerge victorious mm -hmm. the last one yeah. determination right. resilient mm -hmm. is a key patience is a key today we have politicians mm -hmm. sad to mention that move from one political party to the other uh, today you are with this party tomorrow you are with this party mm. it doesn't work that way start something grow it and let victory come when victory comes you will celebrate the lack of patience among us politicians is what is causing us politicians to actually engage in wrong vices mm. so I think we have seen how President Akainde Chilema was uh, patient, how the UPND was patient, mm. how they fought and how they were resilient. And today they are there. And I just want to encourage all our DP members that today we might have not won the elections. But let us be strong. Let us be resilient. Because the future is definitely very, very promising. All right. That's interesting there. Um, let me take you to the other angle, but still on the same aspect of VIP. Um, we know that uh, you did promise the people of Zambia that you were going to form government, of which uh, I'm glad you've mentioned that you've been able to explain why or what led your political party not to form government. And although you still remain uh, optimistic that come 2026, you are going to also demonstrate that the fight that you have right now will not go in vain. But mm. some people out there are going to argue with you uh, to say if DP really was a popular political party and uh, President Harry, for example, uh, how come you never even managed to get even a single seat as a member of parliament, not only at what level? How do you weigh your popularity, really? Uh, first of all, let me uh, just clarify that point. Yeah. We have uh, councillors. Mm. We have councillors in uh, Luapula. We have councillors in the Northwestern. Mm. So uh, not that we don't have any representation. Yes, we didn't have uh, me any member of, member of uh, parliament because even in areas where we, uh, we were supposed to win, you saw that our colleagues in the PF were so, so hard on us. They actually shifted their attention from the UPND to the DP because they called us spoilers. So if there was a party that was really inflicted, a party that uh, suffered a lot of damage during the past election, mm. it was the DP. We saw how uh, the Gen, uh, Gen uh, 20 and was manipulated. We saw how our people were intimidated and all those things. So, yes, we didn't get uh, any seat, mm. but that, that is not a measure of popularity. It is not a measure because today we came out third yeah. and I want to speak very confidently that where we are seated today, we are not actually third. We are the second now. We, Mr. Piri, we are the second. We are actually the largest political part, opposition political party in Zambia. Mm. Because, I mean, the PF is gone. It's gone, 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 a gonest. It will not come back. <laughs> I, I Zambian have emphasis, politics. Uh, which can be debatable. You know, uh, uh, you, you claim to be. Uh, to have taken up uh, the second position in Zambia in terms of uh, politics. But really, we can't really just uh, justify or substantiate these issues without pointing at how many members of parliament you have. Because how we can easily weigh is about representation in parliament. It but ends I mean, there. look. It ends there. Look at this situation. Yeah. Um, I can actually uh, substantiate yeah. my point. Mm. When I say we are the second largest opposition political party in yeah. Zambia preparing to form government mm. and that we should forget about the PF. Yes, I mean it. And I re-emphasize. Because look, in Zambia, in Zambia, 
once a political party ruled and they lost elections mm. there is no coming back UNIP was there they lost have they ever come back the MMD was there they lost have they ever come back the PF have been there they lost will they ever come back the answer is a big no the PF will never ever come back and that's why we are saying as DP we are aware that PF had good people in the structures and I must emphasize this uh, Mr. Innocent because sometimes as people we, we, we brand everybody in the same basket even the Bible says each one of us will be punished for our own sins within the PF they were bad seeds and there were those that were innocent like your name we had the branches there were wards there were constituents leaders dist uh, district leaders they are innocent it is just that they were betrayed by the people that they had trusted to govern they were just betrayed those are very innocent mm. and all those who are out there because you know a lot of people joined the PF because they believed in the vision of President Sata which was a proper vision mm. and they are there they are crying they are looking to Mr. Sata and they are saying Tata so had you been there our party would have not lost would have not gone to shame but you know the members say Bantu, Pashala Bantu. Yeah. President Kalaba is here and his vision is to make sure that that common Zambian should be able to have food on their table. That common Zambian should have shelter. That common youth should have employment. President Kalaba is here and the DP is here and we are saying do not be out there crying alone there is a shoulder in dp to cry on you are welcome we want to embrace you because we know that you are innocent all right so uh, still more on the um, the issue of uh, the public front of course uh, we have set a tone uh, of course giving a threat to people like uh, you and other uh, political parties which a threat the, the, the by innocent which a threat bounce yeah. back come 2026 you've heard about <laughs> it <laughs> don't believe it alamueva and two lady that abamu cheva kukano let us proceed <laughs> <laughs> we have to proceed indeed but you've seen the rebranding going on right now which rebranding given we already is given <laughs> taken up with the vice president well, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing the PF. Yeah. Because I think he, my statement was very clear. The PF is gone. PF is gone. Never to come back again. And let me also mention that even these MPs that PF has today, they will not be there. They will not be there in uh, uh, 2026. Only, only a naive person who would want to lose and lose their seat will go and contest on the PF. Because the Zambian people, believe you me, they will not come and vote for the PF. The gear has changed. This time around, the people of Zambia are looking to the alternative. And the alternative that the people of Zambia are looking up to is President Hari Kalaba. Mm. I mean, the other thing that we need to mention, look, with all these issues, where will PF come back? When President Kalaba left the PF, when he left, he stated clearly, he said, I'm leaving because of corruption. I have not failed to do my duty. I have not run away from the responsibility that the people of Zambia had placed on my shoulders. No, but because what we believed in is not what is happening. 
and therefore he said bye bye and he left today today the dp president has been vindicated he has been vindicated to say what he talked about is actually what is there what will make the people of zambia mm. fail to trust such a man why wouldn't you trust such a man why there were many who were there they didn't leave they stayed but he left why because he has the heart for the people of zambia all right uh, let's get to where we are now uh, of course we've got a new government in place and uh, president hagen hichlema uh, which is the, uh, it's, it's called the, the the new dawn government now and uh, i want to get into your into your minds regarding how far bali has uh, started uh, presiding the affairs of this country it's been in office uh, for a month now and uh, what could be your judgment to this far in terms of uh, how is presiding the governance system well uh, i think uh, his excellence president aginde ichilema has just been in office yeah. for one month go a uh, one month plus two weeks i must yeah. uh, i think if my uh, records are right sure. so there isn't much really that uh, a reasonable uh, person would expect mm. there isn't much because within a month within a month what is it that would expect the the president to have achieved he just had his uh, cabinet his first cabinet mm. a few days and that's where now policies are being discussed and the things being formulated so we don't expect much as at now and that's why as dp we have stated that yes president aginde chilema has formed government mm. and there are things that he had promised the people of zambia to do and so let us give him just a little time 100 days is not uh, something that we can fail to give because i mean as dp we understand the systems of governance we understand how government uh, 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 operates we have a president who was foreign affairs minister he takes time to take all of us through mm -hmm. how things uh, are done and how government operates so we are well acquainted with the systems of government and so that's why we are saying let us give him a bit of time we know that the president made a pronouncement that there's going to be a revision mm. an amendment to the public order act and we said this is good because even president Againde Ichilema was a victim at the hand of the public order act mm. and so he said this will be looked into but we are not going to wake up mr piri just now and we begin saying your excellence president uh, Againde Ichilema, you said uh, the public order act will be amended give us the public order act just today no of course we've had uh, some of your colleagues in the opposition demanding for you know implementation of uh, free education yet i'm coming you know, there yeah i'm coming there i'll talk about Please. that look yes he has promised that the public order act will be amended mm. And everybody is happy. We are saying this will give us a better chance to campaign as opposition. <clears throat> but it will not come in one day. It will not come in one day. Because that is not a decision that the president will make alone. It has to go to parliament. It has to go and be presented. Mm. So <clears throat> there are those processes. Only a person who does not understand the processes of government mm. would say, give us the a Public Order Act in one week. No, it doesn't work that way. Right. Free education, yes. His Excellency President Akainde Ichilema was very clear. Yes. And I think he used very simple English mm. when he said, education will be free in his government. Yes. As DP, we are waiting for the implementation of the free education. We are waiting. We know that he just went into, into office, and so he has to look at what is uh, being done. I think our president mentioned when we had a press briefing, uh, was it last week? 
we did mention when we heard uh, uh, our colleagues say that uh, it will not be free education for everyone, mm. but that it will be free education for a selected uh, 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 people. Yes. And we said, Your Excellency, please remember. We reminded him, please remember that the free education you said was for everybody. And so if there is a change of plan, if there is a change of plan, the people of Zambia must be informed. They must be told to say this is what we promised, but what we have found is this, and therefore the process we are going to carry on will be this and this and this. Between now and the 100 days that we have given uh, uh, our colleagues in the UPND as DP, we are expecting that this is the time that they are going to look at the schools and say, okay, if we are going to have free education at uh, secondary school mm. level, it means that the pupils will not be paying. And if the pupils are not paying, how will the schools raise funds? Will the government uh, subsidize whatever they were getting from uh, the, the tuition fees? Mm. How will it be done? And if we are saying free education simply means books will be free, pencils will be free, every, the child will only need to wake up from home, go to school and come back. Mm. So these are the policies, these are the directions that we are waiting for our colleagues to sit, go through everything and come back and tell us to say this is how we are going to do this and this and this and this. And then we move on. If our friends drift from uh, our colleagues drift from uh, what we 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 heard them uh, a promise mm. we will hold them accountable and believe you me people should watch out for the dp mm. today we are saying we are giving our colleagues a reasonable time to settle to settle and put things in place because even in a workplace when movie TV employs, uh, employs you, they'll give you a probation period, three months probation, so that you learn the nitty gritties of how movie TV operates. Uh, there's also job on training. If you are new in the job and all that, you learn the systems and then you progress. After three months, it's actually law that the company has got a right mm -hmm. to terminate uh, your employment. They would say, wow, I think... Even if we extended your probation to six months, mm. we feel no, from the onset, you can't do it. So 90 days will simply be about three months and 10 days. And after that, we as DP, we will hold the UPND accountable. We will hold them accountable for everything they promise the people of Zambia. For now, let them settle allow them to settle mm. so that they will have no excuse that they were not given time mm. nonetheless there are issues also other issues that we have already seen as dp and we've pointed out which we are expecting that his excellence may make uh, a consideration out of them right. <laughs> the cabinet appointments vis-a-vis -vis the number of women I know that uh, that is much of your interest, and uh, we'll get back there. Uh, but let me just emphasize one question here, because uh, you mentioned that uh, the DP is giving Bali and his government at least 100 days in which to settle. Um, you threatened that uh, once after that, it's not going to be business as usual, because uh, you'll be you know, um, all over to ensure that you remind them for whatever wrongs that they might, have, uh, uh, they, they might commit along the way. But... There are some of your colleagues in the opposition that are saying you cannot give the UPND time now. Uh, reason being that the more you give them t ample time, or 100 days, for example, that's the more they are committing uh, these errors. For example, I've hosted a number of people sitting on that platform who have come to me, are telling me and the people of Zambia to say, already so far, Bali has made a numerous or a lot of errors in terms of those appointments in which he went further to appoint people uh, before they are sworn in, creating ministries which were not really uh, uh, ratified before, uh, before, before parliament. 
All those are mistakes. Why should you wait until after 100 days? Look, President Againde Ichilema has never been in government. Let us appreciate that. Mm. He's never been in government. He's going in government for the first time. He's learning mm. a whole lot of these things. He's learning them. Some of the mistakes that are being made, mm. we are not encouraging them. Yes, we know that some of them are very costly uh, to, the, to the nation. And that is why we have advised to say, President Akainde should make sure that appointments of the relevant people mm. that are supposed to uh, advise him and guide him are done so that those mistakes should not be made. Those mistakes should not be made. Mm. Nobody will say, no, live like that so that you keep on making those mistakes. No. Because, I mean, look, the other thing that we need to appreciate is that when people laugh at your president and they say this is what the Zambian president uh, 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 did, hmm. the shame comes to all of us. The shame comes to all of us. If he messes up the economy, it is all of us who are going to be in problems. And so a time has come. When we as opposition political parties should move away from just concentrating on ourselves and putting interest on the Zambian people, because it's the Zambian people that we all want to save. And that's why we are saying as DP, where he goes wrong, we tell him we have spoken on the issue of uh, the education and we believe that he, he heard we spoke on the issue of a cabinet mm. i'm sure he heard and so we are now waiting to see what he's going to do to hold the man by his neck one month after elections mm. no we are not being it's reasonable being it's being unreasonable what we need to do now is to remind president akainde ichilema on the promises that he made mm. as DP very soon we'll be reminding him on the price of uh, maize. we'll be reminding him on uh, so many things that he had promised mm. so that even as he's formulating policies even as he's having uh, those cabinet meetings yeah. he will be remembering that this is what we promised the people of Zambia because I mean look it is said that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely it is very possible and that's where the the issue is and uh, i want to believe that many of the zambians out there really uh, some of them i remember when uh, prior to the elections um, others made it clear that uh, they were not w willing to to take part in voting others were telling us to say some of us have been voting for you know more than a decade and and so mm. and yet we have not seen any uh, change the promises that these people, most people, people like you, the politicians, you give, you give to the people of Zambia. Once you get there, you literally forget that which you promised the people of Zambia. What makes that? Let me just give one example here in which, according to you, you also feel that possibly there were some errors in terms of how Bali uh, constituted his cabinet because some of the people are not supposed to be uh, appointed or uh, sworn in before parliament ratifies their ministries and the likes. Don't you get advised before you make those positions? Well, I, I, I did mention to say that um, President Akainde Chilema is new in State House. So we should allow those mistakes to we go should on. Not allow, we should new. not allow those mistakes to go on. And that's why for us as DP, mm. we have said the appointments of the Attorney General should be done so that the president will be advised because some of the mistakes that he will make he will make them unknowingly but if he is an advisor the advisor will be able to say your excellency i think this route you want to take is not right the law states this and he will be he will be corrected but we should not rejoice the fact that the president made a mistake and then we should all be rejoicing we should all come together and speak with one voice and advise the president on what is supposed to be done. And I think that's progressive 
checks and balances. And that's what the people of Zambia should expect from us as DP. Mm. Where the president has done well, we are going to give them the credit. Where they have gone wrong, we are going to hit hard and say, no, this is wrong. And even when we speak that this is wrong, we will provide a solution to that. We are saying as DP, even as the UPND has formed government, mm. colleagues, make sure that you prioritize the issue of industrializing this country. Because as long as this country is not industrialized, the issue of creating jobs for the young people will just be a dream. It will be Cinderella and they lived sadly ever after instead of happily ever after. So let us industrialize this country because that's what the DP manifesto uh, uh, states, that we need to industrialize this country. And once this country is industrialized, there will be job creation. So as a responsible opposition political party, we are not sitting and waiting for our colleagues to fail because when they fail, it is the Zambian people that suffers. If the UPND government fails lamentably, I should know that my sisters will be suffering, my children will be suffering. So to avoid that pain on the innocent Zambian people, as DP, we will take the approach of giving checks and balances with solutions that will help this country. If our colleagues decide not to hear, well and good, we'll wash our hands and say, at least we did our part. Right, let's get to the affairs of uh, women, and uh, we, 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 we find out from you um, the fate of women in the new dawn so far. Uh, we were talking about the cabinet that has been put in place so far by Bali, and uh, from what we have seen on paper is that uh, there are a few women already, you know, are you safe? As we I, I must mention that we are not safe. We are not safe because um, when you look at the past elections, mm. uh, we only had 20 women that were uh, elected that's a very uh, small percentage and yet as a country we are saying we want to have 50 uh, 50 representation at all levels especially at a uh, uh, parliamentary uh, uh, level and so when we saw that we only had 20 women um, who were elected we didn't lose hope because we believed that uh, in the constitution of Zambia there were articles that empowered the president to appoint or to nominate let me say to nominate more women to parliament and so um, we were left with uh, that hope apparently our aspirations were not met because uh, article 68 of the constitution of Zambia uh, empowers the president to nominate up to eight members of parliament. And Article 69 of the Constitution of Zambia empowers the president to include women, youths, and various interest groups as he's making uh, those uh, nominations. By and large, we didn't see that happening. Our expectations where that out of the eight, mm. at least His Excellency President Rainde Ichirema would have nominated four women, four women to parliament and subsequent making them cabinet ministers. We were expecting that the minister of gender would have come from those four so that the affairs of the women are attended to. The other four mm. people we expected that His Excellency President Akainde Ichilema mm. was going to appoint two youths and two special abode persons so that the various interest groups mm. are catered for. That we have not seen. We have not seen any appointment of the disabled, which is not good for our nation because we are marginalizing them. 
from the beginning the youths as well we need to see more which we didn't see the women as well we didn't see more which we hope to see mm. our submission to his excellence the president is that we know that govern uh, cabinet reshuffles mm. are done time and again yeah. so as he considers doing his reshuffles we would really be very happy as women to see more women being included in positions of decision making there are permanent secretaries to be appointed we'll be very happy to see more women being appointed to those positions because today today mr innocent the women are suffering in this country today it is the women that are holding the families the issues of empowerment the issues of land allocation the issues of access to loans amongst the women leaves much to be desired we are coming from a background where a girl child was considered to be somebody to be in the kitchen somebody to bear children and all that and the boy child was taken to school and so for a long time girls were disadvantaged mm. now after the strides that the country has made in educating girl children at primary at secondary mm. and also having uh, a number of uh, 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 ladies graduating mm. from uh, different universities and colleges and uh, starting up their careers we should now move to making deliberate policies mm. that should promote women to go into higher positions of decision making i always say that when we are asking for women to up, to be appointed mm. i mean we are not asking to be appointed based on patronage we are not asking to be appointed based on uh, sympathizing with us mm. no zambia has a bank of wisdom of women right. we have realized as women that the earlier we stand up and begin contributing to the development of our country then our children our families our communities our country will be safe all we are asking for yeah. all we are asking for is that give us an opportunity and when you give us an opportunity do not condemn us even before we start give us a chance just like we are giving president againde ichilema a chance give us as women a chance Madam as Vice well president, to prove uh, ourselves I, I know how passionate you are with regards to um your fellow women you know you might spend the whole day speaking or advocating on, on their behalf but when i listen to you um it appears that somehow you are contradicting yourself because you did mention that it will be too early for you to criticize Bali's decisions at the moment, not until after possibly 100 days from now, all right? Of which I'm aware, and uh, maybe the people of Zambia uh, will tell you to say, women representation is not all about someone being a cabinet minister. There are so many positions that maybe possibly Bali is trying to consider a women, for example, like you. To take up those positions you just mentioned about uh, these are uh, permanent secretaries that are yet to be appointed as well among other positions in government why can't you wait until maybe um, after maybe two months from now until we see that all these positions have been filled i did mention yeah. that as dp we will give our checks and balances mm where it is due where it is necessary mm. and will also justify why and will also provide a solution yeah. in this particular aspect in this particular aspect it is in parliament where laws are made it is in parliament where laws are made it is in parliament where the women voice must be heard it is in cabinet 
Where if we have a minister of gender, mm. the interests of the women will be protected. Because under the ministry of gender, which has under, been scrapped, uh, scrapped off, it by has the been, way. yes, it has yeah. been scrapped off. Mm. So under that ministry, the women will be represented. Mm -hmm. Their needs will be met. There will be somebody to attend to their needs. For us as DP, what we have proposed mm -hmm. is that Ministry of Gender will be under the Vice President's office. Right. So that women will be, women needs will be attended to. As DP, we have looked at how many women do not have land, for example, mm -hmm. in this country. Go out and do just a simple research mm. out of 50 women you'll find that maybe one or none will have land which is on title and that is not good for our country it is not good for our country so what we are saying as dp is that when we form government we want to come up with a deliberate policy where 60 percent mm. of land given to the council should be given to the women so that the women will begin building houses mm. it should be given to the women at a very low cost we will not ask the women to pay as much as others that are privileged will be paying mm. we'll only be asking them to get uh, uh to pay just a simple fee towards administration mm. today how many women are able to access loans from banks how many if i go to the bank today mm. the collateral that the bank will ask me i don't have i, I want to that, quickly uh, cruise because time is not on our side um let's also consider the factors uh, such as uh, possibly the non-availability of these women uh, because you can only consider someone for an appointment if that person is available Let's imagine that Bali, I'm trying to come to the defense of uh, the UPND and uh, its administration. Imagine that Bali decided to appoint the few women that you saw because they were available. The rest of the women were not available. What more did you expect from Bali? Is it true that Furthermore, the women I'll were not there? I'll ask you a very direct question to you. Uh, there will be two questions in one. Imagine if Bali had called on you for any of these appointments where are you going to take it up okay number one yeah i mentioned that zambia has a bank of women yeah we have a bank of women women that uh, are learned women that have have got the knowledge the know-how maybe they were not available what what is the description what is the measurement of being available mm. what is the measurement because we have a lot of women in various companies and various platforms yeah. that we can identify and bring to the fore so that is not an excuse for me because the women are there the women are there and that's why as women we are making strides to make sure that more women mm. more women are brought into if it's uh, the political arena they are brought for us as dp we have started a program of mentorship where i as vice president i'll have two three four women that i'll be mentoring so that they grow and learn how things are done so the women have been there right. the second question would i have ac accepted the appointment the answer is no the answer is no. And that's why um, there's a problem now there. No, look, no. I, am, I am vice president mm. of a political party preparing to form government. I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility mm. to inspire women in the DP, to inspire women outside the DP. Mm. I have a responsibility to grow the, the, the party. I have a responsibility to stand by my president so that we form government. Now, if all of us, if all of us will be running to where soup is being saved, mm. who will stay behind and be the next government? Who will be the next government? Quickly, uh, Madam Vip, uh, let's, uh, you, you did talked about something very imperative i think that i took note uh, in your preamble you talked about uh, the uh, issue of uh, recycling uh, politicians or the flip-flopping of these uh, politicians where they are moving from one political party to another 
you know, and some of the justifications we've been taught uh, from some of these people is that um, they want to save. It's all about saving. So why should we mock them if somebody offers himself uh, to save the people of Zambia? I did mention that there are two types of people. Hmm. There are those that are innocent and there are those that are guilty. I gave an example to the structures, the PF structures hmm. that have been left out in the dark there. The wards, the constituencies, the districts, hmm. those are innocent people. They are innocent people. And us as DP, we are extending an open hand to them and say, please come, let us reason together. Let us carry on the vision and do what we can do. They are innocent. There are also people, there are also people that yes, everything, Satellis Palibas, shows that they betrayed their country. There's nothing we can do. Mm. There's nothing we can do. But those who are innocent, why should we judge the guilty and the innocent at the same level? Why? No. If I'm innocent, I'm innocent. Give me a benefit of doubt. If I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Those that are innocent, let's give them a benefit of doubt. Quickly, as we, uh, as we go, would you assure the people of Zambia that uh, if DP formed government and the future, you not go into that temptation of uh, maybe uh, recalling some of the old politicians to serve in your government, like uh, we have seen uh, so far, the PF managed to uh, invite people that had served in the MMD. Again, uh, we've seen Bali as well extending an olive branch to those that had served in the MMD. Uh, today, they are part and parcel of the, his cabinet. Not that it's bad, because you need also experience. But would you, what, what, what uh, commitment would you, would, would you make right now? Well, let me mention that uh, what should happen yeah. and which we expect to happen mm. as an ideal situation yeah. is that... Uh, the only thing that is constant is change. So we've had people mm. that have saved uh, in government and there's always a time to retire. We've seen a number of them retiring mm. so that the new crop of politicians will take up office and move with the mantle. So for us, we want to give an opportunity to the young people. We want to give an opportunity to a new crop of politicians mm. to come and save Zambia. Not neglecting those that have been there because yes, experience is very, very important. Very important. There is always a place. There is always a place that those that have got good experience can always save a country. There's always a platform at which they can save the country. It doesn't necessarily mean that they will need to be uh, ministers of science and technology. No. There are different portfolios on which they can save the country. That is what we are saying as DP. All right, uh, Madam Vip, uh, thank you so much for coming. Remember that uh, in the studio we lack democracy. Once the director tells you to close the program, I have to do that. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. We appreciate right inviting us thank you so much we, we we hope to call you very soon thank you all right all right uh, we end our discussion here my guest has been uh, uh judith kavimba coming from the democratic party uh, serving as vice president allow me to appreciate my camera person in the studio christopher thank you so much for those uh, wonderful pictures and also ashbel upstairs thank you so much like I always say that uh, you, the people of Zambia, you make this program and also the institution in general because of those supports that you give us on a daily basis. We thank you so much. And allow me to say, may God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.